What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. So, I don't know if you if if you're new here, welcome. Um, if you haven't seen the Trident video where I tried Mopanel's layout system, and the video is uh, hashtag Mo Monday how to lay out symmetrical bowling balls for no thumb and two hand bowlers featuring the bonus so I've, I've laid out and tried a bunch of different balls and uh, I'm starting to see I'm starting to figure out what works and what does not and I, I really like what Mo, he simplified the layout. He really simplified it by this three coordinate system. It makes laying out the ball much easier because in the past, you know, I would do the line through the pin, pick an angle, mark that line, pick your pin, make another line and then draw over and then the pin just kind of landed where the pin landed like sometimes it would be down sometimes it would be up sometimes it would be sideways you know like it was crazy and then I would lay it out over and over again and then I don't know why just like aesthetically like everyone else you like the pin up and to the right they don't know why but they want the pin up and to the right Because they have one ball that has the pin up and to the right that works good for them. I think all of us do. <laughs> Mine's the Venom Shock, Pearl. Up and to the right, it kills it. But you put that same layout on other balls, and it's like, it's garbage. So I want to try something new. So I've been trying his, his layout system, and I laid out the uh, Nemesis exactly how he you know described it and it worked fine but I picked different numbers than what he was putting down and it worked so now I want to try a short pin layout and what he was doing for the guy is a short pin layout so everything worked except for the pin above the ring finger line so you have to understand, and this this is the hardest part for me. I was like, oh, why isn't this working? It should work. Because depending on where you put the pin, it might be physically impossible to have that pin a certain distance above or below your center line. So I wanted, I wanted a, I, so these are the numbers I picked. And I know when he starts the video, he's like, and he had some numbers on the ball. Oh, we want a, a two and three quarter pin to PAP. We want a six and a quarter PSA to PAP. And we want an inch and a quarter, but we're going to go with an inch and a half pin above the ring finger line to give room for drilling the hole. And I was like, okay. I'm going to I'm going to pick two numbers. And I was like, I don't know what the second number should be. So I'm going to I'm going to show you how to decide. So the first and most important thing that you want to figure out is the pin to PAP. That is the most important number out of all of this. The rest of it is just kind of like micro tuning at best on a symmetric ball. On an asymmetric ball, when you have a stamped PSA, the pin to PAP and the PSA to PAP are 
almost equally important. But with a symmetrical ball, pin to pap is king. That number means the most. So let's just do this here. I wanted, and this is what I went into this with, I wanted a two inch short pin layout. And I wanted the pin above my center line, if at all possible. Because I want the pin up and to the right, or way over to the right and up a little. So we're going to draw a line from the pin through the CG. And then you go down six and three quarters, which is the entire prosect. And now we have our theoretical PSA. That's better. The chroma key was on. I don't know why. <gasps> All right, so we have our line from pin through the CG down six and three quarters from the pin. We got our PSA. Now I'm going to swing an arc from the pin two inches. And I just kind of connect the dots. There's the two inch arc. And you kind of just do it to the top. So to your right at the top of the ball, obviously you, you don't really need to swing the, the arc to the left of the pin. It's gonna be to the right. Now, the PSA to PAP. What do you use? Well, with a two inch pin to pap, you only have so many options to begin with. So what I do is I just, I stick the zero on the theoretical PSA and I just move the prosect until it's even like remotely close to this other arc that we made. And then I see what realistically are my options? I can get a five and a quarter all the way to a six and three quarters. So those are my options. The closer you get to six and three quarters on an asymmetrical ball, it would be weaker. And the closer you get to, you know, five and a quarter or three and a half, realistically the more you get to the middle the stronger the ball gets so I don't know I'd probably go with a, a five and a half just just for shits and giggles I I don't know I don't want it like and I don't know that it really matters on a symmetrical ball could be wrong could be right I don't know but I don't think it's that big of a deal on an asymmetric, I mean a symmetrical ball. It's not a big deal. On an asymmetric, it is a big deal. So now at this point in the video, he said, all right, we're gonna do an inch and a quarter, but we're gonna go an inch and a half to give a little bit of extra for the drilling. Okay. Now this, this particular bowler he was drilling for, his PAP is up. So he would go down. So he would go down an inch and then draw that line. And that line is an inch and a quarter, an uh, inch and a half above the pin all day. 
Great, works good. Right? No, not for me. Because my PAP is five and three eighths over by an inch and a half down, so I have to go up. So if I go up off my PAP here, and then make a line through, try to do it light. Do you see that? My PAP is five and three eighths over by an inch and a half down, not five and three eighths over by an inch and a half sideways. Is a problem. So, I'm not gonna be too concerned about this whole inch and a quarter thingy because I really, I really don't think it's the biggest of the deal. That so I've noticed where all my pinup balls, I've noticed the higher, the higher the pin is away from your center line the more length and the more sideways it goes. And it's really hard to control. The lower it is, you know, it has less length and more arky, but still snappy. And then pin downs are early rolling, so they're supposed to be smoother and arkier. So I'm already going with a short pin layout which is supposed to be more like a, a urethane ish roll but I wanted to keep the pin above my center line if at all possible so the only way and it I laid this ball out probably 40 times watch the video over and over and over and over again I, just, I wanted to fully understand what he was doing so the only way I was able to do this, to get the pin even remotely close, and because I chose a two inch pin to pat with my PAP, I can't have the pin wherever I want it. It has to, it, it's gonna land where it's gonna land. So, if at all possible, all right. My PAP is an inch and a half down. So I went from, so if we go from the zero, I'm gonna move the zero up so that we're coming an inch and a half down. Inch and a half down to the PAP. And I'm gonna lock this inch and a half point as a pivot point and if you notice on the prosect and I did this a while ago there's a little black magic marker line that I made on the back of the prosect and the reason for that is so that when I know you can see the spline right here this is 90 degrees to this face but when you have the prosect on the ball and you're looking straight at it you can't see that spline to see where 90 degree is. Even if you look down, because it's covered by the ball, you can't see the spline. And you're doing this. So I just marked it right on the center of that back spline. So when I have the prosect on the ball, you see that? You can see the little black line, and you know where 90 degrees is off of this front face. So if I hold on my PAP, inch and a half down, I'm looking at that black dot that I made on the prosect, and I'm rotating the prosect until essentially this spline is going to be my center line on my grip 
So I'm rotating it to get the pin above my center line. So rotate. And at one point, it'll just, it won't matter if you turn anymore. It kind of just, it maxes out. And if you keep going, it becomes a pin down again. So that's it right there. All right, so now, now I'm looking down. I can see that my center line is going to be just, just below that. That pin uh, just moved. As soon as you have it, you want to just grab the prosect and make this first line. I'm going to get a little more. That's it. That's max right there. All right. I got it locked in. I'm making a line. So now we're going through my PAP. We're going to go an inch and a half up. Make a mark. Square off of that. Another line. And now we're going to come over. Five and three eighths. Let me extend this line over a little more. Square off of that. And there's the center of my grip. Figure holes are gonna go right there. So now, if we look at it, let's just double check everything. So now we're a square, five and three eighths over, by an inch and a half down. Okay, right there is my PAP. From my PAP to pin is two inches. Hey, that's what I wanted. My theoretical PSA is five and a half. That's what I was shooting for. And if we go off of my center line all the way across the ball, the pin is above the center line. Three coordinates. Check, check, check. Pencil drop, because I don't want to drop that. Or we could just do the, the pro sec drop. But yeah, I think, I think that's it. 
every other way I tried was pinned down. And he's and it, that that at that point where he has the you know the PAP marked out it's kind of like a gray area there like how to get your vertical axis line and then your center line and if I did it the way he did it if I just did it exactly how he did it If I just followed, if I followed the arc up, went up an inch and a half, and then went over, you know, I made a, a VAL, and went over, it would have been a pin, pin down, so... Now we have a two inch short pin layout on the Venom Shock. I'm gonna drill it and then we're gonna go try it. So let's do it. So here's a tip for uh, two handers. So I just drilled this ball and I took the uh, factory finish off. All I did was just throw a little bit of polish on it, buffed it. I didn't use any sanding pads, it was just the polish. Because I know all the balls that worked good for me were somewhat shiny. This is probably the dullest one, and this is a solid. And I believe this was sanded with uh, one of those CTD bowling 5,000 grit pads, but not polish, it was a pad. And then this has lane shined a little bit since then, but this thing's working so good right now, I don't want to touch it. I'm gonna leave it. So I threw a little polish on Venom Shock. Two inch short pin layout, going in the bag for tomorrow. The reason I polished it now is because it's much easier to just take one of these sanding pads and scuff it up a little bit at the bowling alley than it is to polish it. So I know I know where my range is, where I need to be. So I just polish it just, just to see and then if need be I'll hit it with this. More than likely though I'll probably you know end up coming home and doing the same as that with just a 5,000 pad, but I need to buy more. I gotta get them on the way. But yeah, it's much easier to sand it down than to polish it up at the bowling alley. So, just a tip, and only the tip. So, short pin layout. Done. Tried it. Don't like it. Not at all. Roll it. Uh, I know they say short pin layouts are lower flaring layouts. I forget that that's probably true, but. I, I see that. Two inch, a two inch short pin layout, and a four inch pin up or pin down layout is like two, four, the same thing. The same thing. I mean, not pin up versus pin down. I, I kind of messed around and figured something out, but. Yeah, it was so strong, but also it was warm today, the oil thinned out, you know it always happens in the summer, Boston Bowl, it becomes even harder to bowl there. Even my uh, high road I was having trouble with. 
Where's that loft shot? Where's the loft there? At one point, I lofted the gutter. I just kept moving left. Where is it? Come on, where are you? There it is! Yeah, that was like the only good shot I got with the ball today. I started using it and just kept going left. And then finally, I was like, yep. But it's all good. I'm showing things that are working for me and I'm showing things that are not working for me. So hopefully it helps somebody out. But I wanted to try, because I haven't really tried a short pin layout. I just wanted to see what all the fuss was about. And, uh... Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I just, I went with too strong of a short pin layout and uh, I wasn't sure. They say they're, it's low flaring and you're turning the core on its side. So I really had no idea what to uh, expect. So I didn't want to go like too weak. And I always do that to myself. I'm like, oh, I don't want to go too weak. And it's like, whoa, 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 what just happened? But yeah, I don't, I don't, uh, I, I didn't see a huge difference between a, a two inch short pin versus, because if you think about it, like you have the two extremes, which is uh, like six and zero, right? And you got a, a two, or if you go from six back towards the middle, you have a four. So, and the closer you get to the like three, three area, is where it gets the strongest. So the further you go out in those two directions, like core on its side or core straight up, you know, four, two, they are almost the same amount of uh, chooch factor going on there. And it was weird, this uh, Venom Shock, like you roll it, you see it going, and it was cool because I could see the pin going down the lane. I had like a visual aid and it was going down the lane and it just kind of like got to its little spot and it was like something inside the ball just turned on and it was just like all right i'm gonna do a break stand right here and then go flying left and it did like you could see it rev up and then just went <whistles> so i think i'm, I'm gonna stick to <laughs> i'm gonna stick to the regular pin up and pin down and I was like frustrated today because I couldn't even get the um, the high road to work. So I was just messing around being crazy. And my fingers happened to fit in if I spun the ball the other way so that the pin was down on the high road. And I was just messing around, just, you know. And I rolled the ball a few times and I was like, whoa, whoa, what just happened? Like it... it I always thought pin downs were like earlier, but it like held longer. It was nice and smooth. And I was able to keep it in the pocket every time I tried. And then I spun the ball back up the other way with the pin up and started and rolled it again. And it would just overhook, go Brooklyn, miss the pins entirely. So that was, that was the next thing that I had in mind that I wanted to try pin down. So I think I'm going to, to be honest. I think I'm gonna get, uh, I'm gonna plug the, the Venom shock and probably do like a four and a half inch, I don't know, somewhere between four and a half. Cause I remember with the uh, Fatal Venom, five was not enough. And four was too much. So, I don't know, maybe four and a half, four and three quarters. I'll try four and three quarters pin down for the Venom Shock, solid. That might be a good one. And uh, I do love the high road. I like that ball, even though it's falling apart really fast. Uh, I wanna try, I wanna get the, um, the high road pearl 
and do the same five inch pin that I have on my high road except do pin down and it's a pearl so it should be a little bit longer and if it's a little bit longer and a little more roundy because of the pin down I think that ball would be awesome to have on hand at Boston Bowl because if I can learn how to bowl there I'll be able to bowl anywhere because I can go up to Malden anytime and do very well there 170 to 250 all day with the Venom Shock and the um, oh, the other one, whatever it is. The Rogue Assassin. God, all these ball names. But I did a few uh, bowling ball repair jobs. I have another one coming to me in a minute. So just today, I'll uh, make enough to buy another ball. So I'm just going to get the high road on the way. High Road Pearl on the way. And I want to plug the Venom and try a pin down on that one. So, I don't know. I hope you guys enjoy the videos of just messing around with balls and trying different layouts and seeing what works, what doesn't. Because, I don't know, I get a kick out of it. I like doing it. It's fun. It's fun to see what, you know, what they'll do. And then every once in a while, I'll have a ball that just... I just don't want it anymore, and I'll give it to somebody. So, yeah. But anyway, I liked I liked this new Mo Pinnell like coordinate layout system thing. I like it. I really do. It's it's much easier because you can kind of know what you're gonna get because you know what you're you're actually doing with picking angles and stuff. It's like, oh, what do I pick? Do I pick like? Do I pick a 45? Do I pick a 60? Or like, do I do a 40? And then you lay it all out, and then the pin's like here, there, everywhere. It's like, I want to decide now, I want the pin down. And I want to decide that I want a four and a half inch pin, lay the ball out, and Bob's your uncle. Here you go. So I think I'm going to continue with his layout system just um, you know so everything from now on is the same I'm on the same layout system because I think that system does work better for two handers maybe not one handers maybe the other layout system is better for that but for two handers I, I do like I like that layout system I'm gonna stick with it so but anyways guys that's it for this one. Make sure you subscribe. Thumbs it up if you haven't already. We'll see you next time.